Sup, YouTube? Welcome to Helheim! Don't know why I said it that way, but it's part 32 time. We're gonna go hang out with Thor in Helheim, which should be quite interesting. I am grateful, as always, that you have made it this far. It's fantastic of you to do that. I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you're not subbed, sub. Become the dom of your YouTube existence and subscribe to the channel. Don't be a... I, I don't know where I'm going with that either. All right. We had a wild episode last time. It's great to have you here. We're in Niflheim, not Helheim, because I knew that. Um, it's part 32. Follow, sub, leave a comment. You know the drill by now. My God, if you, if you don't know the drill, I, then I don't know what you've been watching at the beginning of every episode. Uh, we're doing it live. Here we go. All right, Thor, where are we going? Where did we even get plopped down? I the eternal chasm. Oh boy. Take a look around for a second. This is a pretty neato looking area here. A little cow with some udders on the wall. I don't know. I don't even know what direction to go. Nope. Here you go, Thor. This will sober you up, big guy. Don't party just yet. Where to now? I don't want to pull the mask out yet, Thor. I just want to do some exploring. Woo! Okay. Wants me to go that way. It's a little spelunking, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like father, like son, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Ingrid, I wish you could smell these. Interesting. Well, this isn't the way. This ain't a treasure. Oh, he still is drunk. Okay. This part of Mithlheim is way different than the maze I saw a few winters ago. If you came through Tyr's temple, then yeah. The mist around Ivaldi's workshop is straight up poison. Holy bay. All right, Thor, this away. Hey, why can't we just fly over these guys straight to the map? You think I want to carry you all that way? You're strong. I'm not your pack horse. I mean, you ask a great question. <laughs> That's racist. I also don't know that I want uh, Thor drunk flying. It doesn't seem like it would be great. Damn, Thor really is powerful. Druid looks up to you. 
I hope you know that. Don't need a lecture about parenting from you. Just find the thing. And he, uh... Look, all right, I, I understand it. I get it. I understand why Atreus wants to get involved here. Um, Atreus believes that he has the ability to influence people in a direction of understanding and compassion and I think he sees that to some extent as being his role because it in a lot of ways has been relative to his father's role. Like he has been the more diplomatic one and the one who engages more immediately with empathy in a given situation. And his goal, he just wants to help. That's what that's all he wants. He just wants to help. In the same way that Kratos just wants to protect, Atreus just wants to help. Well, unfortunately, he has not quite learned the full nuance of when to stick your nose in other people's business because it's actually helpful and when not to. And really the only way that Atreus is going to learn this properly is to have this kind of interaction with Thor, where Thor basically says, shut the hell up, it's not your place. In the same way that Sif did. He has to learn this. He has to poke around a bit and have people get mad at him. Because one of the more important things that somebody who wants to take on a helpful and caregiving role can learn is that you do not get to decide what's helpful. The people who get to decide what support actually looks like are the people who need the supporting. You don't get to barge your way in and just be the hero you think people need you to be. And that can be a very hard thing for people who want to be helpful and caretake. It can be hard for them to get on board with that idea. And sometimes the best way that you learn that lesson is to have people with a strong enough sense of either self or their own directives to basically say, knock it off. It's not helpful. You trying to barge your way in and advocate for Throod here and give me parenting advice is misplaced. And if you're not careful, it's stupid. That's an adversity that Atreus needs to learn because then what he learns to an extent is me sticking my nose in and giving advice or advocating on behalf of somebody else is not always the best way to handle the diplomacy of a situation. But you learn that by doing and by getting kicked in the nuts, so to speak. Not by having people just say, be careful of giving people advice because they might not like it. Atreus has to have some reinforcement around this in this way by way of punishment so that he learns to listen more and read the situation in the way that his father does to really determine the best way to potentially help or to ask what kind of assistance is needed. So yes, it really does come from a nice place. Intention is fine, but impact is more important. This is a way that Atreus learns about impact. Sometimes the best help that you can give somebody is to leave them the hell alone and let them figure something out themselves. The most popular TikTok video I've ever produced to this date was a video about that. I encourage you to watch it. It is in, form, in some form a trial and error, yes. It's absolutely unsolicited advice. Thor didn't ask Atreus, what do you think about my relationship to Throod? That was 100% unsolicited. And most people do not appreciate unsolicited advice, no matter how helpful you think it is. People ask for advice or ask for your perspective, give it. But if people don't ask, you should usually shut up. Or maybe try to ask and read the feedback. And if it becomes very clear that you're poking in an area you shouldn't be poking in, back off. It's not about you. If it's truly about you wanting to support people around you, you need to listen to how to do that. And if somebody says, I don't need your help, deal with it.
Oh god. I just went backwards. The difference between solicited and unsolicited advice, though, is if somebody asks you for advice, because what I say to people all the time is, don't ever ask a question you're not prepared to hear the answer to. So if you ask somebody, what do you think about this? <coughs> and they like answer, that wall. don't get shitty. Don't I need to do first. You got a pee? Oh. Thank you, sir. Now we can go. Woof. I wouldn't genderize that, skis. It's not just a gender thing. Loki, you really keep trying to. I don't even know what you're trying to do anymore, but you have no idea the kind of shit I've been through. Right. Have giant son of a powerful god with impossibly high expectations. How could I ever know what that's like? <laughs> this is gonna be a disaster. This is gonna be a disaster. God, I don't mean I don't mean to laugh. It's just like you just sometimes when you know enough about <laughs> you know enough about relationships and interactions and shit, you just can see it. You're just like this is this is a train wreck. I see it happening. I know what's I know where this is gonna go. Okay, we're gonna start with Thor. Thor is drunk. Which means that his normal inhibitions are gone. One of the things that tends to happen when people are drunk is they, because the blockers to disclosing certain vulnerabilities are no longer there. Judgment, by the way, is one of the first things that gets impaired by alcohol. You are generally more willing to engage and share vulnerability. This was actually vulnerable for Thor. Like, that's about as vulnerable as we've ever seen him be. When he stops and says to Atreus, dude, I don't know what you're trying to do, but I've been through some shit. That's him, like, really acknowledging that his past sucked ass. That's actually vulnerable for him. I think driven a bit by inebriation, but it's vulnerable nonetheless. So where is this a misfire? You're gonna tell Atreus? A teenager? That's not Atreus's place. You can't expect Atreus to go there. Adults pawning their issues off to children and teenagers, particularly when inebriated, is like 100% inappropriate 100% of the time. It puts him into a really... It puts Atreus in a very difficult spot. And so we might look at that vulnerability and be like, well, isn't that a good thing? In this case, I would argue it is not. This is not who he should be having this conversation with. The conversation should be with Throot or with Sif, or with both of them. Atreus is not the guy that you need to necessarily garner empathy from or put pressure on to respond to you in a certain way, particularly when you have a significant amount of power here. And that power dynamic is not being acknowledged by Thor, again, in part because he's drunk. Him being drunk is not an excuse for this, by the way. He chose to get drunk. So there's that. The second thing is Atreus... Um, Atreus doesn't possess the skills to handle Thor right now. That was evidenced when they were in the bar. He has never seen this kind of thing represented to him before. So he's out of his depth here. And I do empathize with that. Um, he needs to be really careful because one of the things he doesn't really seem to understand that he's working with is that he's working with a uninhibited Thor. 
And if he pokes and prods and gets aggressive in his response in the way that he just did to Thor, he runs a real risk of either like being attacked or this whole thing going haywire and Thor finding it in himself to engage in autonomy finally because Odin's not here and say, screw you, I'm out, which would endanger his entire mission. So is it great that Thor put this pressure on him? No. Does Atreus need to be a little bit more mindful about how he responds here? And recognize that recognize that vulnerability and maybe try to like listen and soften in a way that he was trying to do a while ago that would be good too but again atreus is out of his depth here he doesn't know how to handle this how do you handle his, his father certainly has never been drunk like this in his presence certainly that i could think of so this is a really dicey situation. It's going to be a shit show as a result of that. You have an adult who is in touch with a lot of shame and vulnerability while drunk with a teenager who is completely out of his depth, has his own agenda, and is not responsible for handling that, but wants to be helpful. So this is this is a nightmare because it's, this is going to engage Atreus's desire to be helpful, but he's not able to be. Oh, man. Couldn't it be easier for Thor to talk to somebody who he doesn't really know than to his wife and daughter? Yes, but it doesn't make it any more appropriate. It's triangulation. Like this, what, what Thor is essentially doing right now to an extent with Atreus is he's triangulating Atreus into issues he has with Sif, with, with Thrude, and with Odin. And that is irresponsible from an interpersonal standpoint. Thor should be taking up his issues with Odin. Thor should be taking up his issues with Sif and with Thrude. So, yes, is it easier to talk to a stranger about it? For sure. Is there some utility to that if it gives you a springboard for going back and talking to the people that you need to talk to about it? Sure. But triangulating Atreus here is inappropriate. Very bad. This is very bad. I hate everything about this. And you know the worst part about this? Is Odin knows exactly what he's doing. I guarantee you Odin knew that Thor was drunk. I guarantee you he probably knew that this was going to be an absolute shit show for everybody involved. And that there's a chance he might even get information from the two of them by the way that they both interact here. This whole thing is orchestrated by him in a very nasty way. He knows what Atreus is going to do, and he knows what Thor is going to do. He can read them pretty well. Thor's drunk because Odin, yeah. Thor's drunk because Odin made that more available to him. Is it still Thor's responsibility that he got drunk? Yes. Yes. Odin putting temptations in front of him is mean and nasty and manipulative and is certainly a reason that he should have boundaries set with him. But Thor is still the one responsible for the fact that he got drunk. But Odin hangs over this entire thing. He knows what he's doing. It also probably is... Okay, well, here's another thing. Uh, it's also probably designed in some ways, if Odin's as smart as I think he is, is to send a message to Atreus about Thor. That, because, all right, we're zooming out for this. Because here's the deal. What is the thing that Atreus values in his life more than anything else? I would argue his relationship to his father. And he often acts in such a way that is always an attempt to try to prove himself to his father and have his father be proud of him. When Odin actively degrades Thor in front of Atreus and then puts him in a position where Thor is represented really like terribly and like incompetent drunk idiot 
in front of Atreus. It makes Thor look terrible and is like is likely to elicit some judgment from Atreus to an extent of basically being like, what have you done to be such a crappy son? As opposed to what has Odin done to be a crappy father? Because Odin has treated Atreus incredibly well. So then what does that potentially do Trying to think of how to say this in as less, at least complicated way possible. It elevates Odin to an extent as somebody that is worth impressing. And it calls to mind the chance that Atreus could potentially disappoint, not Odin, but Kratos. And that they're, that he's really like maybe on thinner ice than he might think. And so like there's this bad dynamic that's represented here between a father and son. And in some ways it might be like, okay, well, my father's better because he doesn't do this shit to me. But it also could go in the direction of like, well, damn, like if Thor can't impress his dad and I can Maybe I'm even more important than Thor. Like, damn, Thor needs me more than I need Thor. It's all designed to elevate Atreus and shift some of the representations he has in his mind. I think that's more where I'm trying. I'm fumbling my way through this a bit. But I think that's more where I'm trying to go here. It's like, Odin knows exactly what he's trying to cultivate here via the fact that, like, his own son is with Atreus and Atreus himself is a son. And it's just beautifully orchestrated. And it's 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 brutal. Because it's hard for Atreus to see Odin as the main orchestrator of this. Because it's easier for it it basically gives Odin some plausible deniability because Atreus can go like, well, god damn, like Thor's a mess. An absolute mess. Uh, so why how could that be Odin's fault? Like Thor is the idiot here not Odin. It, 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 it breaks the idea that Odin is this like manipulative abuser, essentially. It has the Thor deserves it vibes. Thor is an absolute hack who gets drunk and isn't helpful to me. He is worthless. He does piss off his daughter. He's a shit dad. He's a shit, he's a shit husband. All he's got to do is not drink. He's a pain in the ass when I'm with him. He brought all this upon himself. So why would I ever believe that Odin is the manipulative asshole here when Thor is the one that's acting recklessly? Odin's been nothing but kind to me. He's been direct. He's esoteric. He doesn't drink. People respect him. So it, I think it's very important that he's been that Thor has been placed in this space. So that Atreus doesn't, he basically gets diverted. There we go. I finally, I got there. I had to fumble my way through there a bit. Not always as articulate as I want to be. So there we go. I could make the argument that it is not Thor's responsibility to initiate reconciliation with his abuser. That is a very slippery slope when we try to say that it is the responsibility of a person who has been abused to make amends with the abuser. Uh, in fact, I would tell you that Thor should... Thor needs to make amends with himself. He has a lot of internal work, but to ask him to go fix that with Odin is putting way too much of the responsibility on thor to put himself essentially in a dangerous space more emotionally than anything else so we want to be careful not to go too far into that narrative odin's odin is the one that would need to initiate reconciliation on that if it was something that he was interested in doing and even then thor's not required to take him up on that uh Zirok, thank you for the gifted subs that's very generous of you and i really appreciate it all right let's keep moving there's just a lot here. This is this is a shit show all around, friends. I I hate every bit of it. Oh, you're all good, Zerok. No, you're good. Thank you very much.
Hoi. All right, frozen caverns. Whoa! Man, I'm worried his cut's gonna get infected. Jeez, man, he's just got like that open gaping wound. Like, aren't you worried about getting infected, Thor? I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just pointing out we're not that different. I got no interest in bonding over shared blood. And that's okay, but you do have interest in bonding with somebody, which is what's making this really hard for him. Like, see, this is the thing that I think is really difficult for Thor. He wants to connect. I really do believe that he wants to connect. I think he wants people to understand him. I think he wants people to know that Odin was awful to him. But he doesn't know how to actually get that. And so unfortunately, one of the things that Thor has turned to is to essentially perpetuate himself as a tragic figure, but in a way that is self-induced. And I, I don't think he ever has had the opportunity to talk about this because Odin has created such an image of himself that the idea that he would be seen by his constituents as abusive to his own son just doesn't fit the profile because that would get people to start questioning whether they should follow him. They already follow him out of fear. Or if they knew this, are they in danger? So Thor is like totally alone in this. He is totally alone in this. And isn't sure how to garner empathy from people. So he he does this like, you know, get drunk or self-deprecation stuff because he's trying to basically send out an, this idea of like, I'm struggling immensely. Without saying, I'm struggling immensely. Because if he said I'm struggling immensely, I'm sure his father didn't respond particularly well to that. And he probably is worried that people won't know what to do with that because he's been seen as this guy who's supposed to be big, strong, powerful, know his shit, all this stuff. Like, he is really the victim of the way he's supposed to be seen. And he's bought into that image instead of being willing to step into some vulnerability. But vulnerability, when you come from an abusive ho household, is incredibly difficult to engage with because oftentimes vulnerability is punished or exploited when you come from an abusive family. So Thor is going to have all sorts of resistances up as a means to block himself from going there when really at the end of the day, what Thor needs is to soften and really just go there with his wife and his daughter and be like, I am really struggling. My dad really messed me up. I had a horrible experience and it would mean the world to me if you guys could hear that because I feel so alone and I'm destroying myself as a result of it because I don't know what to do in order to garner any kind of support from people because everybody sees my father as the all father. Like I've got this big charismatic dad that has this public image that everybody loves. And so I'm already fighting against that when I talk about my own experience, which sadly is something that a lot of people can connect with. It's really tough stuff. It makes it hard to hold Odin accountable. So Thor trying to say, you know, I don't want this connected, shared, bonded experience with you, I think is him being defensive of the fact that there actually is maybe a possibility there with Atreus, and his presence is pinging that a bit. On top of the fact that he is still inebriated. There's real complexity to this, like real legitimate complexity to this.
Uh, truly, my answer to that question is I don't care. Thor, this is how this, as far as I'm concerned, this is who Thor is in the game. I don't, I don't care about that part of it. Another wall of ice. Hmm. Thor, mm -hmm. could you? Rough, man. Thor's like just here for his utility. Just chuck your hammer at the ice, bud. Okay. I just want to add one more thing. If you can't be yourself, you also might not feel like you can follow your own path. That doesn't sound familiar to you at all? <laughs> oh, man. I... Look, dude, I, I get what you're trying to do. It's really dicey. He hit Thor a bit there, I think. Man, you are throwing darts at a dartboard that's a little too far away, bud. I need a bigger challenge. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how he responds here. Again, I, I want to relay, like, Thor does want to connect, so if Atreus is going to keep prodding this and he hits the right spots, there's a chance that maybe Thor opens up a little bit here. I would still argue it's relatively inappropriate. I don't think this is the place for it to happen, but... I wonder how much of this prodding is motivated by Atreus wanting to help Throod. Probably a lot of it. I, I think a lot of it is because of that. Summons a spectral squirrel that scavenges a health stone? What? <laughs> okay. So we've got some similar life experience. What does it matter? It seems stupid to gripe about the things we can't change. Who says we can't? A lifetime of experience. Wow, he really is opening up. Oh boy, Atreus. This is a tall task, brother. Really tall task. You better know what this is. I think the thing that's even, it's hard for me here too is because I don't think Atreus actually understands what he's getting into here. Like if, even if this ends up being good for Thor, um, boy, oh boy. There's so much more work to be had here, Atreus. from Yvaldi's workshop, right? Far enough. Uh, 
Uh, do you think the reason why Thor got drunk was when he heard Heimdall died? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to ask him. I doubt it, though. Uh, if you want insight into why I think he got drunk, I would recommend watching my last episode. Frost agent. Again with the griping. Calling out a problem isn't griping. It's healthy. All right, Atreus. Thor's not like, you turned into a wolf? That's weird, kid. I love Hellwalkers. You just blast them apart. Poof. Problem solved. Don't have to think. Don't have to feel. Well, there's our answer to the question of why does Thor drink? I said this last episode, but I'm going to say it again. There are two types of heavy drinkers slash alcoholics. There are the folks who drink because they want to get away from their emotional experience, numb it and stuff it down. And there are people who drink because they want to get closer to it because they have so many blockers that they need alcohol in order to remove those blockers. And we are learning more and more about Thor that Thor is a drink to make it go away. Which means that on the day-to-day, -day, Thor is pretty heavily steeped in his emotional experience. It means he probably thinks about this all the time means that he feels the rift in his relationship with his daughter. He feels the rift in the issues he has with Sif. He sees the fights that Sif and Throod have, and he feels it. He sees his father all the time, and it affects him. So drinking gets him away from it. Fighting gets him away from it. He's eternally seeking distraction because he has conceptualized his father as immovable. And that gives us... So, as much as it gives us information about, like, why would Thor drink, it gives us information about what Thor's experience is while sober. He is trapped in his own mind. He is trapped in his physiological experience of emotion. And it's something that he never learned how to properly work himself through and understand because his father sucks. So he didn't have the developmental trajectory of learning how to navigate that particularly well. So what does he turn to? Something that is incredibly consistent and reliable in the form of alcohol. And this is a lot of times how it happens. I need it to go away. Alcohol works. If I can't fight, I'm drinking. And it means that when he was sober, he was having to fight these demons. And because he can't really fight the demons with his father, because his father's not interested in doing it, it's really tough stuff. It's a, it's a long road ahead, and that's why childhood abuse is so terrible. Because it sets you up in adulthood to have to deal with a lot of bullshit you shouldn't have to deal with. Do you think part of the... Uh, reluctance to connect with Atreus is because he empathizes with him getting manipulated and used like Odin himself. Uh, very well could be. Uh, again, it's hard to know the answer to these questions without asking Thor, but I think that's a plausible hypothesis. Uh, Sikar, thank you very much for the gifted subs. I appreciate it. Hey, look, another ice wall, Thor. 
Through there, just ahead. Or this Thank you. I don't think that's where we're supposed to go. So I said it. Fun. You Wouldn't it be plausible, and that's all the more reason to connect, if Thor's ready for the work. I mean, I that's the problem here, is like, so, I, I mean, it's a good question. Here's the thing. Uh, one of the most underrated aspects of change is preparedness for it. Like, we talked a little bit about this when I made the distinction between first and second order change, but the thing is, is like, you, if you're gonna wanna change by connecting with Atreus here, if you're Thor, you gotta wanna do it. Like, you gotta be ready for it. People are usually pretty shitty at evaluating their preparedness for change. You're usually more ready for it than you think, but he'd have to be, he'd have to be ready for that. He'd have to understand that that's what he wants slash needs to do in the context of healing from whatever it is that he decides he needs to heal from. Like, there's a lot of complexity there and self-evaluation that Thor would have to get into in order to meaningfully make that assessment for himself. The thing is, is that when people are presented with significant adversity and are fighting with their like demons and their trauma, more often than not, you're gonna take the path that you're used to. You're gonna use the coping strategies that to this point have worked for you. And sometimes that means path of destruction as opposed to doing the new thing. And I think that that's something that has really been a theme throughout this entire game, is how much do you want to change, whether it's for the better or worse. So Thor would have to really decide for himself that he wants to take on that endeavor of figuring out how to navigate all the shit that he's dealt with in his life, and is Atreus the person he wants to start it with? I, you know, it's like you have to be ready for that. It's not something that you just go into automatically because Atreus is present. Readiness for change and preparedness for change is a important part of the process. Okay. Uh, more treasure hunt. It's weird to me how, like, there's just random tombs all over the realms. Like, wouldn't you think they'd put people in, like, graveyards and shit? Anonymous, thanks for gifting that sub. What are you going to say when you see them again? Sif and Throod, I mean. If all fathers pleased, it doesn't matter. Look, kid. I don't need you to solve my family problems for me. Just find the mask. Let's get out of here. A real softening there. You hear it? Like, you can hear that. And... This is as, this is as close... Again, this is as close to vulnerable as Thor is really going to muster up for himself, I think, here. And he preempts that vulnerability by stating his dilemma, which is that as long as my dad's good... We're good. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, anybody who's ever been in a relationship or started a family with somebody who has had the unfortunate history of coming from abuse, you probably empathize immensely with what Thor just said because there is a real, uh, there's an internalization of abusers. And sometimes, whether you like it or not, when you are with somebody who was abused, that abuser hangs over everything. And sometimes that person will make decisions that they abstractly believe are in the best interest of the abuser, despite the fact that it's bad for everybody else. And in some ways, that's what Thor is doing here. That's how impressive, and I don't mean that in a good way, it's how impressive the thumb on Thor 
is that Odin has. He has infiltrated every aspect of Thor's life, in part because Thor perpetuates that. And I guarantee you, Throod and Sif feel that. They know that Odin sucks. There's not a lot they can do about it. And then they get mad at Thor because Thor consistently makes decisions that are in the best interest of making sure his father's happy because the childlike part of him avoids abuse as a result of that. And they lose out as a result. And you hear a little bit of the vulnerability of that there where he knows that that's happening. And he feels powerless against it, which is why he exerts control in the ways that he does. Oof. Gosh. Up this way. Looks like there's a path. One pathway coming up. Thank you, sir. You enjoying the freedom? Out here without Fabian looking over your shoulder. I, uh, well, yeah, I guess. It's different from what I'm used to. In a good way. Ooh. Thor, are you envious of what Atreus has? You know, it's it's interesting. I I didn't really even consider that angle until right now. I'm so focused on Atreus' experience of Thor that I didn't think about Thor's experience of Atreus. Which is that he potentially is envious of the fact that Atreus has a father that actually wants to protect him, that actually gives a shit. And he is... Uh, and here's what's really interesting from Odin's standpoint. God, the layers. The thing is, Thor's not going to acknowledge that in the way that we would conventionally think that he's going to acknowledge it. He's not going to he's not going to go in his mind like, "Oh man, I wish I had that." What he's going to do because he doesn't fully understand the dynamic between Kratos and Atreus, and it's evidenced by his language here of, do you enjoy the freedom? Is he's projecting. He is projecting the idea that you are constantly jailed by your father, and that anything you can do to get away from him means that you're experiencing freedom. That's coming from his own experience with Odin. That is not a commentary on Kratos. So why does that work really well in your favor if you're Odin, where Thor is passively contributing to your ideation? Because then Thor perpetuates the idea that Kratos is a prison, that Kratos is a problem, that Atreus should think freely, which is what Odin wants. So literally, just because of the experience that Odin knows his son has had for him, if Thor engages with some of that envy, he's going to fill in the gaps. He's going to talk about it from a place of projection, and it's going to perpetuate the entire narrative that Odin needs Atreus to buy into. It also would be, I think, incredibly vulnerable for Thor to engage with the idea that he wishes that he had what Atreus has because he's perceiving Odin as immovable and doesn't necessarily have the... Even if he tries to change his behaviors, it doesn't do anything to cultivate a connection with his father. So... He's kind of given up on it. 
Maybe that makes him frustrated. Maybe that means that we get more information from Atreus about how he feels about his dad. Because if Thor says this and then Atreus goes, it's actually not so bad. Me and my dad are cool. He's just given Odin information that he needs, which is what's the status of your relationship with your dad now? If he didn't already have it. Woo! Baby. This is complicated for both of them. If I haven't already made that abundantly clear. Looks like we gotta get up that cliff. Guys, no thinking. thinking. <laughs> it's better when I know it's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah man y'all <laughs> the <sighs> i love this game with all my heart because it makes so many parts of my psychologist and therapist brain light up that I just like, I can't even, it's like Christmas every single time we play this. Thor is essentially a teenager right now. Like we are in some ways getting, not, I'm not calling this arrested development, but I think that Thor being in the presence of a teenager is leading to him having some teenage qualities about him. One of which being that Thor is doing his best to try to like assault, assert autonomy and be kind of a curmudgeon and take control. So when Atreus asks him to fly around, he's like, no. But when it's his idea and he gets to do it on his own terms, hell yeah, let's climb that cliff. And then Atreus is like, dude, like give me a heads up and he kind of laughs about it like there are basically two teenagers hanging out right now and i think that the thor probably to some extent is connecting even maybe with that of like you know what this is like the teenage dream man we're just two guys out in niflheim doing our thing no parental supervision even though there is parental supervision and then there's the internalized object of your parents that you're carrying with you anyway but it's just, it's great because like, there's this connection that's had here, which gives that much more power to whatever kind of information is going to be exchanged between the two of them that could effectively be used against them later on. I just think it's really neat. Like that little exchange there, it, it's a piece of connective tissue, I think, between the two of them. I'm not saying Thor's frozen his teenage years, but he missed out on a lot of stuff. And that mixture of envy and pain and sadness and anger and frustration and a whole nine yards is what makes this just a really rich engagement between the two of them. This is why it's actually, uh, you'll actually see this in certain nursing homes that give a damn about their patients. Uh, you will see these like mixtures of uh, the geriatric community and like young children like when you put them together it's really cool particularly for the older folks because it can draw out some youth like it can create some like novel experiences this is why sometimes like when you don't not saying like every adult needs to go hang out with teenagers that's not what i'm talking about but like as we get older, we tend to tunnel our way into only hanging out with like like minded people and people who are similar. And while that is a really good thing, it also can prevent us from having some cool, uh, diverse representation that can draw different parts of us out. And I think in this case, like Thor generally has to deal with Throod, who doesn't particularly get along with well, and he maybe doesn't have the like experiential connection with like he does with Atreus. And so being with Atreus draws certain parts of him out. Kind of like when we were back in, uh, uh, what was the, whatever the place, but we were with him last time where he started fighting everybody. It like really drew that out of him. 
it's kind of neat. Like the moral of that story is like you can sometimes try to work to diversify who you hang out with and what you engage with because it can bring certain parts out of you that help broaden you a bit in a way that can be really meaningful. You think that Thor, this is something Thor would have enjoyed if, or did enjoy with his son? No idea. I don't know Thor. I'd have to ask him. Muspelheim, thank you. So, we close? Uh, maybe. I can check. And I'm gonna go the opposite way that the mask tells me to go because I need to see every square inch of this place. <laughs> I guess we're going to be coming back here with Kratos at some point. We got to jam that sword hilt in there. I do also like that we're given the sword because the game essentially doesn't want you to um the game doesn't want you to control Thor which I think is neat sort of allows him to be autonomous your response your repeated response if I don't know I'd have to ask him sounds like it comes from a very ingrained lesson uh I will actually pause to address that because I think that's an interesting comment when I'm hypothesizing about why people are doing some of the things that you're, they're doing or like what's motivating them, whatever. One of the things that I'm often looking at is process things that I can put together based on observations. One of the things that I generally cannot get to or understand are the subjective experiences that fill in the gap of that process. So a question of like, do you think that Thor would enjoy doing this with his son is impossible for me to answer because I don't have any data on Thor's relationship with his son. I have not had the ability to observe that. So I can see maybe that he's enjoying this with Atreus, but I don't know the nature of the relationship to his son or the context around what this type of event would be like with his son for me to ever know the answer to that question. So the only way that I could ever get that information would be to ask Thor directly. So when I do these analyses, it's actually pretty important that I make that distinction because a lot of what I'm hypothesizing is based on theory, but it's based on the data that I am observing. It's it's. Uh, on patterns, it's on stuff like that. If I have incomplete information, particularly information that's subjective, the best way to gather that information is to ask somebody directly rather than make an assumption about it. It's also why I try to be as clear as possible in every playthrough that I do that my analyses, I don't claim to be correct. Like I don't believe that everything I say is absolutely true and gospel in the way that it is. I realize that my hypotheses can be off at times. But for me to say something like, yeah, I think Thor would enjoy this with his son, presupposes way too many things. And it puts me in a really awkward spot relative to Thor because I'm making an assumption about an experience that I don't really have the right to make the assumption about. So that's when I answer questions and I say I'd have to ask them. That's the type of process that I'm running up against uh, as it relates to doing these analyses and shedding insight on the characters. Yeah, mind reading is something you generally want to stay far, far, far away from. 
Thor, I, um, hope everything goes okay when you see Sif and Thud again. Well, hoping's better than thinking. It's a start. The more that Thor emphasizes that you shouldn't be thinking, the more of a presence of the remnants of the abuse he experienced with Odin becomes apparent. One of the core things that abusers, not just on the micro level, but even on a macro level, one of the core things that an abuser wants a victim to do, or in this case, to stop doing, is thinking. Because critical thought is one of the things that leads to people making better decisions for themselves and setting better boundaries. And if you're trying to control your incredibly powerful son, whom you are threatened by, you would instill at a very early age, don't think just do what you're told just repeat this back to me don't even remotely try to engage your brain on this because if you do that you might start to find holes you might start to engage in your own self-advocacy you might engage with autonomy you might even realize that you're part of the reason things are the way they are is to control certain things about you. So you don't want people to have other people around and you don't want people to think. So if Thor at any point in his life had certain thought processes that might have gone in the direction of cutting across Odin, the best way that Odin could undercut that from a very early age would be to suggest to him that thinking is useless. It's either that or over time, Thor has been so heavily punished for critically thinking that he has essentially decided it's not worth his time and he's trying to spare Atreus by telling him to stop thinking. If you think, it's going to create pain. It's going to remind you that there are things that you can't control. If I think about the dynamic between me and my father, one of the things I have to come to terms with is the fact that my father continues to act the way that he's acting despite any efforts I might have made to try to change that behavior. And that's painful. It's pretty rough stuff. But yeah, when you, when you want to control people, you try to get them to stop thinking for themselves. And this happens not just in small relationships. This happens organizationally. This happens politically. And it can be pretty dangerous. But that, I don't hear that as being Thor's voice necessarily. Alcohol. I don't have to think anymore. Because when I think it hurts. I mean, it all makes just a ton of sense. And if you're watching this episode, and have maybe said this to yourself in other episodes where we've talked about the overarching influence of Odin, your thought process is, Dr. Mick, you're giving Odin too much credit. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, you gotta be real with people who act that way. You have to know what you're working with. 
when somebody has shown themselves through data to control and manipulate and abuse in the way that Odin has, it is incredibly important that you continue to think about that in a way that is really critical and in a way that is appreciative, not in the positive way, of what he's capable of because it gives you more insight into just how easily you may be subjected and indoctrinated into it. There are people in this world that operate similarly to Odin. Many of us don't want to believe that's true. Many of us want to believe that we are impervious to psychological warfare by people who are willing to employ it. The sad reality of existence is that there are people who learn to control their environment for whatever reason by doing the types of things that Odin does. And if you believe that you are better than that, that you are not susceptible to it, you are more likely to get caught up in it. You have to believe that it is possible that you could be worked over by somebody like Odin. Because there are some people who are so incredibly good at it that before you know it, you've been sucked in in a way that you never could have even possibly fathomed. So as soon as you're like, nope, this kind of stuff ain't going to hit me. You're in trouble. here oh boy oh boy gotcha thank you Thor Phew. that was close um thanks Thor wasn't about to lose that okay. okay you did it we are on the verge of great things all of our work together you're welcome. I'm oh, such a dude, man. Look at that. There it is, right there. He doesn't want Thor to be powerful at all. Doesn't he wants to separate him from Atreus as quickly as possible? If anything, he maybe even wants him to envy Atreus. Oh, baby, that is terrible. Also, guess who's been watching the entire time because he knew to show up right now, Odin. He watches everything. He knew all of that. Everything that happened. Dude was watching it like a freaking drone. Two seconds after I grabbed the mask, he grabs it. Which again, if you're, if you're a thinking person, you realize that Atreus is a pawn for Odin because he needs Atreus for whatever reason. Like, if all it is, chat, if all it is is you hold the mask up and it glows and then, it follow, and then you follow it and it takes you to the piece of the mask, why on earth didn't Odin do that? If that's all it takes, right? If you're Atreus, you're sitting there, you got to understand there's a reason he's making you do this thing that is incredibly simple to do. And Odin knows probably that Atreus has every inclination to take that mask back to Kratos, which is why he's showing up with two Valkyries and Sif, no less, which is a wild thing to have her with Valkyries. And, and boom, immediately, right there, ba bam. Sorry, you are here. Why? His father murdered Heimdall for said he has proof. Take him. No, leave him oh, alone. Shit. I command it. You said no more. I thought he brought them. Spilled. You said family comes first. You don't think that this is retribution for him being here? He's put your granddaughter in danger. 
He's made your son miserable. Loki didn't kill Heimdall. His father did. Your daughter is old enough to make her own mistakes. And your husband started drinking again all on his own. Dismissed! You two, a word. Oh, damn. Wow. Oh, what a... Oh, what a mic drop. Can't you see what's happening? He's not protecting us. Magni, Modi, our boys. We used to tell them stories by the fire. Do you remember? We would carve those wooden horses. We would play and laugh until the sun sank and they fell asleep in our laps. They were thrown at the All Father's problems like brittle knives to a mountain face. And for what? What if Thrut's next? Think, Thor, think! You. Oh, damn. You kill my son. Sleep in their beds. Turn my father against me, my daughter. I have no idea what's happening. You know, I finally thought of something I can teach you. Hey, you stand down! Sentry better be right. Where do you go? Holy hell. Way to go, Atreus. Way to think about that, bud. Way to know you had that golf ball to toss on the ground. Love that. Um, Wow. That is, uh, god damn. Um, look how, but okay, look how quick that happens though. All right, remember, these playthroughs are about making sure that we translate things to real life. Look how quick that happens. It's too hard in Thor's mind to consider the fact Maybe his father is awful and needs to be addressed in whatever way that is. He immediately is able to direct that over to Atreus because of the way that Odin cultivated that. It requires for a second for Thor to think the one thing that Thor thinks is a terrible idea, the one thing that he thinks is too painful. And Thor didn't think. Thor did the same thing that Kratos did when he choked out Heimdall, which is he got into his emotions and he didn't take a second to go there. It's a real shame. It's a real shame, but that's, 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 that's the power, man. That's the power that when you get out and you become an adult and you came from abuse and you carry those people inside of you that abused you, you carry that narrative, you carry those internalizations. And at the end of the day, if you haven't done the work, and I understand that the work is incredibly hard. It makes it hard to think clearly in those moments because you will go by way of protecting yourself in the ways that you've learned how to do that. And so Thor in that moment decides to go at Atreus. He decides to divert it all to him and assume that the novel experience or the novel person is the thing that's at fault there. <whistles> Brutal, man. He's got the mask. Sindri. You sure know how to plan an exit. Atreus. Uh. Holy hell. <laughs> Glad you're safe, lad. Got it?
Oh yeah, Odin shut the shit out of shut Sif down immediately. Yeah, it's good. You just wrecked her, wrecked her emotion with logic that made sense, and, and she went. And, everybody's too afraid of Odin to do anything. Okay, uh, this is a really interesting moment for Kratos. I think really interested moment for Kratos because it worked. It worked. Atreus went in, and he did it. It worked. <laughs> Without him. Kratos wasn't there. He didn't have to go. It was a mess. It's hard because it means that, like, Kratos has to wrestle again with this idea that maybe he doesn't, Atreus doesn't, doesn't need him to protect him. Oof. Yeah, to go back to the Sith thing, I, I could see that as well, that she was trying to get Thor to go after Odin. It was never going to work. That's the problem. It was never going to work. Um, he used that logic to kind of bulldoze over her, but it what it does is essentially reminds Thor to an extent that Odin's immovable, and even if his wife tries to stand up to him, that's kind of what I was going... To go a little bit further, I think that's kind of the point that I was making in the cave, is at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, if... Thor hasn't done that work. Uh, he's not gonna go in that direction. It's too, it's too much. It's too hard. There's too much, too many ramifications. Easier to destroy his marriage. Easier to destroy his relationship with his kids than it is to go hold his to go hold his father accountable, because that's how when so Thor. Thor is, if you get into the internal representation aspect of this, Thor is a huge guy. Thor is massively imposing and has a ridiculously powerful weapon. But when Thor is engaging with his internal image of his father, which, by the way, is what he's carrying with him when he's looking at his old, frail dad, it's not, he's not seeing the Odin of now. He's seeing the Odin of when he was a kid. Thor was small. So in these moments, Thor, it does not feel big. Thor feels small. It, it's, it's all by design. It's all diminished. Thor is incredibly diminished. He does not see the reality of the fact that, like, he could take his dad. He could go after him. It's been too heavily cultivated via the way that Odin created, curated his image that his son then internalized and then internalized himself as a referential image to that. So Thor doesn't feel empowered there. The only way Thor feels empowered is to go after Atreus, not to go after Odin. It's what makes it incredibly sad, and then it undercuts his marriage. Sif then feels powerless to get Thor to do anything different. She just appealed to him in the most emotional way she possibly could. Well, Thor just saw his father, who again, he's very small relative to, diminish Sif, cast her aside, which is going to ping this sense of helplessness all of a sudden. So when Sif shows up and tries to empower him, it's a losing battle. He, he, there's there's no chance. Again, Thor is incredibly tragic, man. Like, the shit that's going on with Thor, like, he's got some shit he's got to work on, but man, this whole thing is cultivated in a really horrific way. Like, she shot her shot, and it didn't work. She got dismissed really quickly by Odin, who then went and immediately talked to the Valkyries, which undercut what she came in to do. She goes and tries to talk to her husband. Her husband undercuts her and goes after Atreus, and it's a freaking nightmare, dude. Nightmare. The problem was, at the end of the day, she needed Thor to think, and Thor has been conditioned away from thinking. That's the, to me, that's the ultimately tragic piece here. Thor's coping strategy just shot himself in the foot, just shot him in the foot by design. 
if he just sits for a second and thinks about what his supportive ass wife is saying, he maybe launches at Odin, but he's conditioned himself away from it. He went to what is easier. He went to what he knows. He went to what has worked. He didn't do the different thing, which is why the Norns are sitting in the spaghetti house right now, giggling their asses off because they can predict all of this shit as a result of it. Just in time. Pretty sure I burned my bridges in Asgard, though. Wait, why were you out here? Sindri told us where you would arrive should you find trouble. Oh, I thought you might have been exploring without me. No, lad. Your dad was just concerned. Though, now that you mention it... Mimir. Brother, please. It's all so crowded and tense back home. Don't you miss the three of us out finding our own adventures? Putting off the inevitable. Exactly! It's not the worst idea. I do want to show everyone the mask, but it'll keep. Hmm. Interesting. Does that mean I have a choice of where I want to go here? I love that. Hey, you guys want to just like, you know, mess around a little bit? Put off the inevitable? It kind of feels like an embedded warning from Sony Santa Monica that's like, hey, if you go to Brock and Sindri's house right now, you're at a point of no return. It does kind of feel like that. <laughs> uh, very well a possibility, Sikar. Very well a possibility. Um, uh, oh boy. I need to get, I really, oh man. The only one I want to do is the recipe, I think. Uh, so I'm going to go to Alfheim. I think, and try to get that. Just in case it's a point of no return. I got, y'all got, it got me skittish here. I'm just gonna, we're gonna, quick trip, 20, 20 seconds, in and out. That's all it is. This won't even be that hard. Quick in and out. Come, the rest can wait. Thank you, brother. Yeah, uh, Odin, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta eat a little stew. All right. Okay, gotta get a little, get a little stew going here. All right. Uh. Now, is there a chance that I could immediately find this thing? It would seem that perhaps it's over here. Which means that we're gonna go, I guess, straight. You think Kratos would be a Domino's man or more of a Little Caesars type? Oh, Little Caesars, because he could he could just go walk in, grab it, and be done. He's he's all about that hot and ready action. Uh, I do want to say I appreciate y'all being here. If you're bummed out that I'm doing this right now, just hang tight. Um, I am so glad that you are willing to let me Sherpa you through this playthrough. I hope that my analysis and words have been meaningful in some kind of way. 
Uh, it has been an absolute joy to play this. It is wild to me how many different layers that we engage in at any given point in time. I, it is really something. So thank you for uh, thanks for sticking this out with me. I just really felt like a warning about point of no return. So I'm gonna go and take care of this. I hope this side quest is fast. We'll find out. I was given a heads up by somebody that I uh, trust immensely that the stew uh, is worth doing. Now, the question is... He's getting peace from Greece, so getting food from his dictator Julius is probably great. Yes, takes him back to the homeland. Uh, I guess the tricky thing here is for me to figure out where this undiscovered Delio is, because that really seems like what I need to... As I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure there's like either one of those things that I can chuck the spear at or something in here. It's just a matter of finding it. A vengeful berserker gravestone. <laughs> All right, I'll do this one. I'll give this one one shot. If I lose, oh, two of them. Great. Okay. <laughs> No, that's not what I wanted. Shit. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I wanted to pull the spear. Yep. Dude, I kept trying to pull the spear and I just couldn't do it. That was so close. God damn it. And I said I was only gonna do it once. I just kinda, that's all I wanted to do. I just want, I wanted to pull the spear and I kept pulling the freaking ax, dude. Ugh. What do you think, chat? Think I got it on number two? All right, actually this time. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fire, Kato! 
I don't have another stone, I don't think. I don't think I get that back, right? Yeah. I do have it, okay. Ah, yeah. That wasn't as good. All right, that's fine. I don't really want to do it anymore. Boop. Though that is a lot less important to me than doing the other stuff, so. We gave it a good college try. Good enough. Don't care. Yeah, decent attempts. First one was better. I just needed to be patient. Didn't want to be. Cause problems. You know the drill. Um... I really thought that I'd done basically everything there was to do in this area. Uh, I will say this, uh, chat, if anybody knows where the stew recipe is, am I in the right spot? No, I'm not. All right. Uh, what area is it in? Are we sure? 100% sure it's in the Forbidden Sands? Because last time we did this, I got conflicting information. Just looked it up to be sure. Okay, Forbidden Sands. All right, thank you. I don't want to spend... Uh, I don't want to spend my whole stream doing this because I want to see what's going to happen when we go in Brock and Sindri's. The last ingredient we need. Where? What? Oh, there it is. All right. What ingredient around here, brother? Good shit. Hey. The meeting of Yari and Soma. Ah, right. So the two agree traveling together might be beneficial and way less lonely. Aye. Their bond with each other grew quickly, and the meals they shared became legendary. It was said that to dine with them could sustain you for weeks. That was the last of the ingredients. Can we take them back to the cauldron in Midgard? 
You bet your sweet ass we can, Atreus. You kidding me, bro? That's the whole point of us doing this. Hop in, brother. Let's go to Midgard. Going in and out. To Midgard. I got so turned around last time that we did this. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Can you imagine how Odin pissed Odin must be right now? Yeah, right? Atreus took the mask and his ravens are like, dude, they're like in Midgard cooking right now. That's what they're doing. Good luck. Papa. Pretty sure the stew's over here. Nope. Up there. He's just watching you two go around in circles. Yeah, we're going around in circles, getting our ass kicked by berserkers. Whole thing is just, uh,. Whole thing's just a freaking nightmare all around. He's just chuckling. This is what is oh my god, what is going on here? Some hack silver I missed. Okay. Oh, because I, I marked the wrong thing, like a dum-dum. There we go. That's what I want. Let's go, rainbow flames. I'm into it. Finish the story. Gladly. It was said that Yari and Soma first shared a kiss in the fields of Jotunheim. Wait, what? How did they get there? Don't know. Point is, they went on countless expeditions, each location more beautiful than the last. But they found as they did, the destination became less important than simply traveling together. What about the unnameable thing? It was home. Yari and Soma had found it in each other. Cool. Permanently increases all stats by five. Neat. That's cool. I really like that. I'm glad we did that. Delicious soup. We got dinner. Anonymous, thank you for giving this up. All right. Let's go.
while this loads up, I am going to pee really quick so that I am of full sound in mind and body while we go through this. All right, as a reminder, friends, do not spoil, do not backseat. Particularly when we do main quest line stuff. This new quest is actually a tribute to a LGBT dev who died during development. His partner also worked on the game, pitched the idea to the quest team, and they put it in. The runes actually spell out their names. That is cool. I was actually told by somebody who works for Sony Santa Monica that that quest is incredibly meaningful uh, for that reason. So I'm glad that we did it. All right. We have the mask. Back, everybody. Hey, hey. You made it. I'll get to here. Back. Join us at the table if you're ready to stay. <sighs> See? I told you the key would get him home. Because you tapped it with a hammer. Dwarven magic makes no sense. Right? Luna one time made me a breastplate out of dog barks. You're I back. I still can't figure that one out. Are you okay? I'm fine. I just hope unlocking this thing was worth the cost. You have it. What did it show you? I didn't get to use it. They found out about Heimdall. I had to run, but at least Odin can't use it either. But if you didn't get any answers from the mask, all you've done is steal Odin's greatest treasure, just after your father's killed his most loyal ally. None of us are safe, even here. So we have no choice. We find Surtur, sound Galahorn, and bring Odin to justice, now. You'd incinerate every soul in Asgard and call it self-defense? Does he ever suggest plans or just crap on everyone else's? The obvious plan is staring you in the face. We don't need Odin to use this. We can slip into Asgard and do it ourselves, right under his nose. We gain the knowledge we need to shatter this prophecy of war once and for all. Except begging your pardon, you don't have a way into Asgard. They got the big horn, don't they? Oh, so you expect them to sneak into Asgard, blowing a horn that sounds across all the realms? I expect you to bite my blue butt cheek. Please, just think about it. Man. I do not trust Tear anymore. But I... But it's so hard for me to articulate why. He 
He's not that stupid. I'm not reading chat right now. Um, because I just, uh, you guys are just going to get my running thoughts here. Uh. The more things move in our direction. The more he questions our convictions on it. And I, it's. I just don't, I don't. I understand why Tyr would be afraid of Odin. He would be terrified. He was literally locked in isolation. For a, such a long time. I don't understand why he's pushing against us because if he was pushing against us for the sake of trying to help with the argument, he would not propose that stupid of a plan. That is like that idea of going to Asgard and using Odin's mask directly under him brings Odin in proximity to the mask. We are literally in the one place that he can't access it. Like it, it, it is as you all know. Okay, y'all have been with me for 32 episodes of this game. You've been with me for 32 episodes of this game. And something that I talk about all the time is consistency. That, like, generally, one of the things... We just talked about this an hour ago. One of the things that I'm generally looking at is the process of somebody. Does the process make sense? Does the, like, content fit? And I... The thing that I am trying desperately to, like, fight my way through here is that, like, his shift in behavior since we found him doesn't make sense. Like, I, I don't... I don't understand it. And I tend to get really suspicious when I don't understand something. But, like, I don't know what there is not to trust because as far as I know like tears an important piece of this so he has to have some kind of motivation here to constantly question stuff I'm all for playing devil's advocate as a way to think out a plan but like he's almost become antagonistic and like what drives me crazy is like the only the only first of all he was calling Atreus Loki which is a really stupid fucking idea when you have Kratos sitting there. He kept calling him champion. He keeps downing the plans. Every time we do something that's successful he gets annoyed. But he has no reason 
Like, if I didn't know any better, I would say that he's working for Odin. But he has no reason to work for Odin. He has no reason to do it. He was imprisoned by him. We took him out. And I don't even think that Stockholm Syndrome or whatever would even push him into a position where he'd be willing to work as an agent for somebody that, like, stripped him of his, like, identity. Like... But if he, I mean, maybe it's just that he's so goddamn skittish that he's like willing to think so far outside of the box that he gets to like stupid decisions as a result of it. But like, I just cannot put my thumb on the inconsistency and it immediately has me so like, like I felt my feathers ruffle when he said that. It felt so awful. And I can't get a bead on the, like, I just, this is what's driving me crazy. To all who are watching this right now, this is what's driving me crazy, is I cannot get a bead on this. Why would you go to Asgard? Why would you suggest that? Why would you suggest we go to Asgard? If the mask is capable of showing us what we need to know to stop all this stuff and avoid war, why would you want us to go to Asgard so that freaking Odin knows we're there and raises his army and does the very thing that he's been talking about trying to avoid? The very thing that you want to avoid. On what freaking planet does Tyr want to do anything that's going to incite violence based on what we did, like on how he was when we met him? I don't understand it. And this is, it's so frustrating because I so want to give, like, I, I, here's what's crazy about what's stirring this, what's stirring up for me is like, I so badly want to give like a good analysis on this. Like, I really want to be able to like nail this. And I'm like struggling so hard because it's like, I don't want to blame the writing because the writing in this game has been too good. So like, I can't, I can't square up the idea that Tyr is acting so unbelievably inconsistent with everything his profile would suggest that he would do. It's just like way too chaotic for me. I'm like racking my brain right now trying to find something. I just don't know. Like, I literally don't know. And for me, personally, if I can't get a bead on that, I immediately am like red alert. Like, something does not feel right. The only person that would want this entire group of people sitting in this place that Odin doesn't have access to to be on the same page, the only person who doesn't want that is Odin. Tyr has no reason to try to sow that much discontent here. But he has no reason to work for Odin. But also, now that I... Odin made a stink with Atreus about the fact that Heimdall died. I don't recall Odin making a stink about Tyr being sprung. He didn't seem at all to be frustrated by that and the way that he showed his hand with Heimdall dying. Like, he literally brought Atreus into his room and was like, you know anything about Heimdall dying? Playing Mr. Stupid. He never did, like, you know anything about Tyr getting out? Does Tyr fucking... Holy shit, man. That is like the ultimate, if Tyr works for Odin, that is like the ultimate, like, holy hell, dude.
That is freaking undercut of the century if Tyr works for Odin. If he's a fucking rogue agent and has been the entire time, Odin beat me. Like, Odin beat me. I was, like, really doing my best to stay on top of Odin. And if Odin managed to do that, he freaking got me, dude. I'm kicking Tyr's ass out of here right now. Get your ass out of this house. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, dude. But what? Oh my God! But why would he? Why would he do it? Why would he work for Odin? Why would he do it? I don't like. Oh my God! Unless I mean, Odin had to have just completely like. Odin had to have basically ripped his freaking soul out entirely. Like he had to have degraded him over so many years to a point that Odin. That, that Tyr would think it's in his best interest to act as a sleeper agent for Odin. And I don't even know what he could have possibly promised him to make him agree to that. It's so out of my peripheral vision. I see chat flying right now. I so badly want to know what you guys are saying, but I, I, I just, man. Like, I feel like my heart's like dropping through my stomach right now, dude. Like if he's been sitting here this entire time, Odin really does know everything that we have been trying to do. And maybe he just overplayed his hand here. But, but he, well, he, no, but like, Tear, Tear is like, like, dude, are you just, every, pe, ah, why would you do that? The suggestion that we would go to Asgard is insane. I don't know, chat. We are all on the same page. This mask, the easy answers that it promises. I know this, shortcuts always have a price. Atreus, you have carried it. What do you think? I think it's a chance. At worst, we'll have something Odin wants as leverage. At best, if it really gives us all the answers, then we can make our own path. Nobody has to die. Grand. Now all we need is a way to Asgard. <laughs> I know I've been a burden to you all. I know you've questioned why you even pulled me out of that hole. No, we haven't. I have to. But it's clear now. This is what I'm needed for. No. This is my purpose. No, don't you do it. One last time. No. I will pick up my spear and... Oh, okay. I thought he was going to pick up the I mask. I will lead us to Asgard. Excuse me. Did you see Freya's face? Did you see Freya's face there? Freya's like, what the fuck? What? No! This is off! I hate this! I hate this! Look at Freya's face there! But if you got a way to Asgard, where's that idea been this no shit, whole dude. fucking while? What? Not that a fair question, brother. You was held Asgard. You would have gotten us all killed. And we needed to give Loki time to find his destiny. Bro. Here it is. Take the mask out of his hand. All led to this. Oh my we God. We can get inside? I'm going after Odin. I will not stop you. We can do both. Spot on, brother. 
If the mask doesn't give us an out, we'll still have the drop on him. Works for me. Let's do it then, and quickly, before he sees us coming. He does hate surprises. No, no, don't give him the mask. Stay on your damn spruce. I still want to hear the details on this uh, new way to Asgard you got. Spill it! It's an ancient path. We can't reach it from here. Where then? Let me collect my things and I'll show you. You ain't got no things. And where are you going with that mask, Rock? That belongs to the kid. He earned it. All you done was make passable dirt soup. Rock, it's okay. No, it ain't. This ain't right. All the pieces ain't welding together, true. No shit! Thank God! Oh, Brock, I feel so seen right now. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I have to pause it for a second. I feel so seen. I am so with Brock. Like, what's with him calling you Loki anyway? You know that ain't his name. Hey! I'm talking to you! What?! Never shut up! Brock! All the things, Holden. Let go of the boy and face me. Tell your brother to throw me the mask and you've got a deal. Stop moving. Freya, if he dies. No, no. It wasn't part of the plan. But if he dies, we are square for Heimdall. And honestly, you got a bargain. I will kill you. Plan on that. Mm -hmm. So nice spending time with you again. Freya, please. Uh, uh, uh. Can't be in two places at once. Frig. Hey! I don't move, you don't move. Don't do anything you'll regret. I regret many things. Killing you will not be one of them. Rushwasson! I am in control! Here! Throw me the mask! Now! Too bad, son. Looks like war after all. Please, you have to save him. You have to. He can't. You can't. Maybe if I go back to the lake. Stop me. I know what you've done, and I forgive you. But you gotta stop. You gotta let go. Huh? Oh my God, dude, what? Are you like, okay. Are you seriously telling me that tear has been Odin the entire time? Oh my. That, are you, that's why the accent's missing? Down to the, I, <laughs> I thought that was an error. Oh my God. Oh. 
Holy crap, dude. I in, in a in a million years I would have never guessed that that was Odin. I mean, you could have given me you could have given me 50 guesses. I mean, I tried to walk you guys through my thought process on that. I mean, I landed on he's like a sleeper agent for Odin. The idea that that was actually Odin I don't know how, how, like, I don't even, I don't even understand. Like, I don't even have a point of reference for how that could even be possible. Oh. Wow. He had a raven keeper standing in for Tyr. Remember when Tyr calls Freya Frigg? <laughs> wow. Man, okay, can I just take a sec? I, I, there are so many thoughts, guys. There are so many thoughts. I like, I mean, I can't even believe the amount of information that just came my way on that. I really can't. That is that is unbelievable to me. And I'm sure this is probably the experience of everybody that ever has this. I just want to say, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for not spoiling that. That would have ruined so much for me if I knew that that was coming. So I just, as I, just, just a gigantic heart to every single one of you that hangs out with me here live and who watch these YouTube videos. If you knew that was coming, thank you so much for not spoiling that. Holy cow. I got warnings uh, from Sean not to look at TikTok comments like many, many, many times. And I think he cast a wide net on that just to throw me off the scent. So I have to believe TikTok probably spoiled it at some point. I don't read my TikTok comments first. Sean does. Um, wow. I just can't. I can't wrap my head around the fact. Like the fact that that was tear. I mean, it makes so much sense to me now. As I'm sure it does to so many people. Like tear. There were so many anomalies. Like, I now I get it, dude. If you told me that that was... If you told me that was Odin, every, si every single thing that Tyr did there makes sense. If that's actually Odin. It doesn't make sense to me if it's Tyr. Like, it was so hard for me to get on board with that, as you guys heard. Because, like, if you're Tyr... Like... <laughs> like, it just... It doesn't... Like, why would you think like it just it really it just the inconsistency there. But if you tell me that that is actually tear or if that's actually Odin completely makes sense, completely makes sense why he interacted in the way that he did. Wow. That was I mean, come on. That is just, that is unreal. That means the real tear is gone, right? Like real tear is long ago died. Holy shit, dude. I will talk about Brock in a second, I promise. Um, I just, it's kind of a bummer to me that Brock dies while you have that, uh, while you have that. Um, but uh, holy Christ, that is like... I just, it's unbelievable, and it's so beautifully created. Like, the idea, like, when all of a sudden it's its Odin holding a tray. Oh, I'm like, come on. Also, can we talk about that throw from, uh, oh, just, like, am I, my, like, I just, oh, my God. And you know what? While we were standing in Niflheim, this is exact, dude, this is exactly what I was talking about. 
This is exactly what I was talking about. When I say, like, you can't underestimate what somebody like Odin is capable of, think of how hard I was being on him. <laughs> and yet I still... He still got us. He still got us, dude. Like, I'm, like, trying to track everything. I'm trying to be as, like, omniscient and, like, and, and, and analyzing and speculative as possible. And, and even I didn't catch that. It's unbelievable what he is capable of. If you don't have, if right now as you're sitting here watching this, if you don't have empathy and sympathy and your heart's not going out to Thor, to Freya, to all the people of all the realms, anybody who has ever been influenced by Odin, I don't know what to say. Like, it is, it is unbelievable to me what this dude is capable of. Thor makes sense. Freya was married to that. Thor was raised by him. Holy. And he kept it mostly stone-faced until the end. And you know what's fascinating about that? Is I think Odin got so excited about the mask that he played his he overplayed his hand. He slipped. When he suggested they go to Asgard, that's how bad he wants this thing. He slipped. It took that to get him to slip, and he overplayed his hand, and it made everything suspicious. And Brock, of all people, to pick up on that. Wow. But you know what? Honestly, I think if there was anybody here that was going to catch it, it would have either been Freya or Brock. I actually think Brock picking up on that makes a lot of sense. Brock is, he is observative, ob he observes, he's attentive, he listens, he, he puts pieces together. Brock does not mess around. So the fact that he all of a sudden sniffs that out and goes after him there, That sucks that he's dead. I don't think Sindri's going to recover. And I tell you what, Brock using his final moments there to try to release Sindri from him and facilitate his autonomy of basically saying, like, let it go, dude, you got to stop. I mean, Jesus, that is like, that is just so powerful. And I truly don't think it's going to work. I think that Sindri is going to beat himself up probably forever because of the nature of the way that Sindri's mind works. Like, I, I really think that, like, Sindri, Sindri was hanging on to this, felt terrible about it, didn't get the opportunity to disclose it to him. Brock tells him he knew. He tries to release him of it. Brock's final act, literally, in life was to try to protect his brother from himself. And I really think that Sindri's going to get too lost in his own shit. I just, I, I don't know that Sindri has mentally prepared himself to be able to internalize that. I really hope he does. I really hope that he has the opportunity to internalize that. But if there if that scene is not a testament to the fact that like when you have time lift with people to engage with them and there are meaningful things that you need to iron out with them because it's important to you to do that, you should do it. Like you should do it because you never know. And unfortunately, Sindri has to sit there and hold his brother and doesn't get to have the conversation that I'm sure he's been hoping that they could maybe have at some point. And Brock, and I just, that is just so tragic to me. It's so tragic to me. And Sindri's like, you know, maybe if I can go to the lake, maybe if I can, and, so, and Brock's just like, no, bro, you can't. And I know why.
Hmm. Sindri never got to take control of that. It really sucks. Tell you what, though, that's a hell of a way to go. That's a hell of a way to go, calling that out. And exposing that, but Jesus, man. Wow. I, oh, I didn't see this going here. I really didn't. I thought I was going to, like, pick up the mask, and they were going to be like, okay, I guess we're going, or let's figure out a way, and then they were going to turn around and give me control of Kratos. I didn't think that was going to happen, man. I Like, that's freaking hit me across the head like a two-by-four. Yeah, I know. He's gone. He doesn't have his full... Yeah, he's... He, Brock's straight up gone. And Sindri knows that. And Sindri's going to over-personalize it. I guarantee you he is. He's. It's. I just... I, you can take that to the bank. I don't know that Sindri's ever going to recover from that. Oh. oh, do you think Odin got thrown off his game because Kratos and Freya started working together? So, I okay, I have a lot of thoughts. We're just going to go there. Um, I have a lot of thoughts. I think there is a number of things that probably threw Odin off. Uh, the first recollection that I have of Tyr acting weird was when Freya came back. And I really think that that messed with Odin. Because I think seeing Freya not attacking Kratos anymore and having made amends and moved her way through that grief in the way that she did... I think that threw him off. And now that I know that that was freaking Odin talking to his ex-wife... It makes sense why his why he got goofy. That's the first time I remember being like, that was weird. Like, the way that Tyr just reacted to Freya's presence didn't make any sense to me, and now it does. So I think that's a big one. I think when he learned about, uh, what was it, like, the whole, like, uh, like, Groa's thing was actually not useful at all. Yeah, man, I think, like, it just geez man so many things like he acted weird when Freya came around he acted weird when Freya came back he acted weird when Atreus was thinking autonomously he tried to stoke the flames of Atreus going to Asgard and doing what he wanted to split Kratos and Atreus he did he kept apologizing for being burdensome and all this shit as a way to try to keep them on their Man, like every God, it Jesus, it comes together. I think your exact words were that seems really manipulative. I'd expect that from Odin. Yeah, dude. Wow. <laughs> I just. Oh, my God. Fucking bravo, man. Uh, Santa Monica, way to get one on me. I, I didn't... I, I'm usually pretty good at sniffing shit like that out. I just... That's a good one. That's a really good one. That's so good. Whenever you said Odin was always watching in the past, you had no idea how right you were. No kidding. <laughs> I just, I just, 
<laughs> Man, I was going to say take it to the bank on Rogue Agent, but that would have been too easy. Literally make him Odin. Yeah, sure. There we go. Odin just, you just shapeshift into tier. And let's put a freaking typo in the subtitles and make Dr. Mick think that that must have been a mistake. But that would, of course, that wouldn't be a mistake because Sony Santa Monica QC'd this unbelievably well. At one point, you paused the screen on tier and said, Odin's in the room with us right now as an example, and I laughed. <laughs> Does anybody know where that is? Because if, if, if somebody knows exactly when that happened and would clip it, I would be incredibly grateful. Um, hi, YouTube. Th again, okay, just thank you all for being here. Thanks for listening to me blubber on about this. I just, th this kind of, uh, th this is just my, my, I just, my brain. Man, I'm I just am so rarely speechless on this stuff, and it is just unbelievable to me everything that came at us. Oh man, it explains why Odin knew that Kratos and Atreus were working with Durlin. It's sure, dude, everything makes sense. Everything makes sense. God damn. I was giving the Ravens too much credit. He's literally sitting there the whole time. Oh. All right, let's finish this cutscene up, huh? Holy cow. No, Strider, I was not spoiled. No, I managed to avoid it. I don't think I could do this kind of reaction if I knew it was coming. I really, I don't, I couldn't act my way through that. It would have ruined so much stuff. I had no idea that was coming. That's why whenever you'd ask where was Tear, whenever we were at Sindri's house, go figure. This whole time. So, uh, what do we do now? Now? Now we kill Odin and anyone who gets in our way. Truth. What? Where? It does not matter. Oh. Where are you going? We are done. No way. You can't run away from this, Kratos. Odin won't stop until no we stop way. him. We need you here. Kratos really about to mic drop some second order change. Wow. You know what? You know what? I think Odin just did Kratos a solid. Bear with me here for a second. Okay? And I, I don't think he did it. He didn't do it intentionally. Okay? 
But Odin just did Kratos a solid. By releasing Kratos from the monster narrative. what he just did. Kratos just watched that shit and was like, I ain't worse than that. That's pretty bad. You just messed with my son. You just messed with my friends. You just killed my very dear friend who happens to have an incredibly close connection with my dead wife. You know what? I just want some time with my son. My son, there's no way my son is going to look at me and think I'm a monster after he just saw that shit. My son just got a hefty dose of how awful somebody can be, and it wasn't me. Let's go, bud. I Seriously, I'm not even kidding. I think that's why Kratos was empowered there. I truly believe that that's the impetus for why he just said, I ain't doing it. I ain't going to Asgard. I'm not killing slews of innocent people who are fighting for a cause that they do not understand. I'm taking my son and I'm going home. I don't... We're going to just spend some time together. I heard the story about that stew, and I want that. I don't care where we're going. I just want the journey, my son. Let's get out of here. Because you ain't going to see me in the way I've seen me. Not after that. I mean, that's the, that, right? Like he, he, Kratos just saw Odin devastate his son. And what would old Kratos, Kratos said to him, he looked at Odin in the eye and said, you will die. And then all of this happens and he sees the way that his son is, is hurt by this. And he sees his friend Brock dead. And he sees Freya just want to be like, we're going. We're going to go kill Odin. That He saw himself there. And he's like, nope. 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 I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the different thing. I'm going to do the thing that the Norns didn't predict. I understand why Freya wants to do what she wants to do, though. Yeah, and it got split. Got split into Freya's. Freya, Freya's doing what Kratos would have done. I agree that Odin deserves death. I do. I rarely sentence people to death. Yeah, man. Odin's got to go. Odin is causing so many problems. But you know what? If they want to buck prophecy, this is how you do it. Right here. Turn around and go home. I Who knows? I, I don't know. I, it's just Kratos is like, you know what matters to me? My son. Prophecy? Don't care. Odin? Whatever. I'm, I'm over it. Freya, you and Freya, go do your thing. Freya, you were able to unite all the elves. Go do it again, buddy. I'm out. And you know what's amazing? You know what's amazing about this? Is we spent so much time. We spent so much time going, Kratos, no! Don't go do it. Don't go be violent. Don't go be violent. And then Kratos turns and he does the different thing. And then we immediately go, no, go to Asgard and kill Odin. Like we want him now all of a sudden to do the thing. Because Odin's such a piece of shit. And he gets us mad and reactive. And now all of us are like, Kratos, go, bud. Go kick his ass. <laughs> kill him. <laughs> After we spent 31 episodes being like, let's do everything to avoid going. And you know what? That is a lesson, my friends, in how homeostatic mechanisms work in systems. We are so used to Kratos going and getting the job done that when he turns around and does something differently, we immediately are like, no, don't do that. And we're doing everything like I want to take Kratos and charge right back into Sindri's house and let's go to Asgard. But no. This is, this is what makes that change so hard. Is because if there's anybody that's going to be able to take him down, it would be Kratos and Atreus. And they're like, nah, man, I'm out. I'm doing the different thing. Uh, prophecy, prophecy. Uh, I, I just want to spend some time with each other and we're dead. And we're done. Or dead. Or both. Don't care. Not doing it. And I have to commend them for that. To, to be consistent to what I have been talking about this entire playthrough.
I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what their plan is. That's kind of the point. Kratos is always Mr. What's our next move? And Kratos is like, no, man, I don't even want to plan anymore, bro. I just want to just come on, bud. We're going home. Yeah, maybe we will build a hot tub. Maybe we will sit there and let ravens and spears fly down on us. But you know what, man? We're going to do it together. We're going to go build a snow fort and a snowman. And we're gonna let and we're gonna blow this horn and we're gonna let Ragnarok happen, dude. We're I, we're getting on the boat and then we're gonna hit the iceberg and we're gonna go down. Whatever. We'll play some music. Yeah, bring that liar. Blackjack. Son, have you gotten laid yet? Let's figure out a way to get you laid, buddy. Like, come on. I don't even care anymore. Like, that's literally where they're at right now. Instead of like, we must have a plan. I, and again, but it's amazing. Listen, look at us. This it's my it's my favorite part of this. It's what I love so much about this. It's everybody's like, no, go to Asgard. <laughs> when we haven't wanted them to do it at all. <laughs> They're doing second order change and we hate it. Because we've come to expect them to do something about it. And Kratos is like, I'm not doing something about it. And everybody's like, no, but you have to. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't don't leave it to me. I know I've been talking about how you shouldn't do this, bud. But like, no, now that you're saying, ah, no, I need you to do it. Like, it, it's human nature. We're all guilty of it. We all do it. And it's amazing to me because I have somewhat similar experience. I'm like, really? Now you're going to go? But you know what? Go. If your entire motivation has been to get out of the prophecy and to go do your thing and spend your time with your son, you know what? At this point, he's like, it's not even worth protecting from all this bullshit. Let's just go live our lives until it's all over. I don't give a shit what's coming next. I'm not planning it. I'm not looking at rocks that tell me what it is. I'm going home. Where my wife was and where I've got fond memories of raising my son, good enough. <laughs> And who knows? Maybe they'll get there and Atreus will have a conversation with them and maybe it'll change. I don't know. But what I do know is this episode was ridiculous and that I am incredibly grateful for all of you hanging out with me. And I hope that my thoughts and reactions have meant something to you. I assume they have since you made it this far. This episode is bananas. And so we're going to pick up on the next one by leaving and going home. <laughs> and we're going to see what happens. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I was what a just like what a ride, man. I don't even know. From now on, when people ask me what's my favorite playthrough, it's this one. It's literally this one. Like, this is the best playthrough so far. <laughs> like, oh my god. I just I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know when I'm going to... I'm going to be thinking about this all night until I fall asleep. Please, if there was never any other video that you ever left a thumbs up on, I hope it's this one. Leave a comment down below. Follow the links in the description. Be consider becoming a fourth wall member. Buy some merch. I don't know. I just I appreciate your support by being here. If you want to take it to the next level, there's lots of ways to do it. I really hope you come hang out with us live so that you can be on this stream of consciousness on the right side of my screen sometime. I would love to say hello to you. Uh, leave a comment. I would absolutely love to hear what you have to say about this episode. I, I would love to hear your thoughts. If there were moments leading up to this that you were like, damn, dude, I've been wanting to say this all the way up until now, whatever it is. Uh, but thank you so much for bringing me on board. Uh, and I will, if you're binging, I'm sure you're going to hop right over. If you're waiting for the next one, we'll get it out as soon as we can. I appreciate you all, and I'll see you on the next one.